Good evening. Great to see you. Welcome to a new series of Thursday Night Live. But we begin with a controversy which, far from being eclipsed by the death of Princess Diana, has been intensified by it. The plans to spend up to £1 billion on a Millennium Dome by the Thames at Greenwich. This is what the site looks like now. And this is how the dome would shape up. Those behind it say the new millennium experience will be the envy of the world. The biggest building of its kind, a landmark with Made in Britain stamped all over it. But the dome had its critics even before those dreadful events in that Paris tunnel on Sunday. Those critics now say the causes Diana held dear only underscore the futility of it. The question, do we need the dome? Thank you, Andrew. Clive Sinclair, why do we need this dome? Well, London's one of the world's great cities. It's one of the, the sort of world cities for the, for the next uh, millennium, really. It's one, you could count them on, on one hand. Um, and this is a fantastic occasion. And London, sitting on the Meridian Line, is going to be an, a tremendous attraction for people from all over the world. And if, if there's nothing for them to focus on when they come here, it, it'll all be a bit futile. All right, Steve seems Norris. A marvelous opportunity. Isn't there a better way to spend a billion pounds and on a dome? Oh, do you know, I can always, I can imagine that when Christopher Wren was building St Paul's, people said, "I don't know why you bother with the church. We should have more social housing." You know, if you follow that route, there'll always be something better to spend your money on. That, but if that... we wanted a dome, we could maybe just use the Teletubbies house. That's a dome. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, you've got a, you've got a site there. The serious point, Andrew, is that that part of London, that little peninsula there. Very close to Canary Wharf, you can almost touch it, and yet there's 400 acres there that's absolutely derelict. Uh, and one of the things is that it just happens to be there on the Meridian Line. This project actually brings that whole area to life. It puts people back there, puts housing back there, puts industry, it creates jobs, shows the best of Britain. It's a real, uh, you know, it's an exposition of everything that's best in British. And yes, it's got a theatrical air to it. It's What's it a going great to put gesture. in the dome? What's going to be in the dome? I don't know that they've finally planned what's going to be there, but the objective of it is... We've just written the cheque for a billion, have we? Yeah, it's a billion and, you know, tell us later what's going well, to be Well, Andrew, if you just want to turn it into a futile discussion, you follow that path. The reality is that what they're doing is that they're planning now to put inside the dome the best of British industry, British enterprise, British art, British culture, British design, British flair, British innovation, all the things that have given us, uh, you know, two millennia already of terrific history. And I actually think that it just on occasion, it's really worthwhile having a, a building which goes beyond just what is absolutely necessary, what's totally utilitarian. Yes, of course, you can always think of better ways to spend public money than on a gesture of that sort. But I bet you it's only in Britain where we'd have this kind of discussion. In France, elsewhere, and in Europe, people would accept naturally that right. a great building like this is the right way to celebrate the, the millennium which can't be celebrated anywhere better than in Greenwich, in London, where time is actually dated. All from. right, I'm not looking for... <laughs> I'm uh, not looking for utility. I'm just worried about the people signing a blank cheque for a billion. Teddy Taylor, do you agree? Yes, I think it's one of the silliest nonsenses I've ever heard, quite oh, frankly. Thank you. It's quite elegant. <laughs> because, I mean, for a start... If this is the millennium, which actually is a religious festival, shouldn't we be building something to help people? Shouldn't we be doing something to serve the people? What's wrong instead of all this nonsense of having a hospital or a centre for learning, something which will last? This silly building is going to last for one year, then we're going to set all on fire and put something else in its place. Yeah. And remember yeah. the yeah. money, yeah. the, the money, the money that's been spent, the money that's been spent. Remember right. it was 500 millions last year, then it was 600 millions, now they tell me it's 750 millions. Where's it going to come from? £450 million pounds from the lottery, which is meant to be for good causes. £100 million pounds from the government, and the rest of the money is not there. They've signed a contract with some clever person who hopes to attract the money. Quite frankly, there are lots of things we need to help people. We're short of money. Let's have a decent hospital to help children we in this site. Instead of the nonsense, the instead of all this nonsense of spending we money on something which really... Look, my friend, this is, if we're short of money, as we indeed we are under all governments, shouldn't we use this money to help people instead of having this silly dome? And remember, when all we right, talk no, about no, no, we got the silly dome bit. What I want to know, uh, Christopher Freeling, is, first of all, why a dome? I don't think there's anything particularly British about a dome. And also, what, why build something? <laughs> I think it's going to last a little longer than Teddy Taylor says, but it's not going to last for long. 
25 years at the most, it's the millennium. Why not build something to last? Well, if you take, I mean, take the precedent of the 1851, uh, the great exhibition on which the whole of South Kensington was built on the profits, which was uh, a celebration of British science and technology in the Crystal Palace, as innovative in its day as the dome is today. And that didn't last. It was moved from Hyde Park to Sydenham, then it burnt down in 1939, whatever it was. Bad move. But, but uh, in terms of GNP, if we're talking about, you know, need for money and so on, the impact of that globally, putting Britain on the map as a exactly. place where science and technology were at the cutting, was absolutely huge. Not short term, but long term. All right, Claire, Claire Gorham, yeah. a repeat of 1851. Put Britain on the map, it puts us on the map again, the eyes mm. of the world will be on us, uh, and for maybe decades afterwards. I very much doubt it when it looks as ugly as it does anyway. You don't like it? <laughs> Do <you> know, <laughs> it looks, it's like an afterthought for close encounters or something. It's a hideous building. That's what they and, you know, Teddy town. says Ooh. that the amount of money that is being spent on it is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it's just another example of, of totally misspent funds when we desperately need, uh, you know, as you said, hospitals, health. There's so many homeless people. So many homeless people for a start. But would you be against about... any kind of monument, or is it this no, particular think, dome that you don't has, like? I think there has to be some sort of monument. I mean, it is a very, you know, it's a huge historical occasion. We've got to measure it and mark it in some ways. But I just question the fact that it should cost that amount of money. Okay. That's, you know, just from a very sort of. Let me bring level. in some of the audience here. Sophie Parkin, is this uh, not a waste of a billion? We of could you do better it's not things a waste. with it. I mean, to celebrate the greatness of Britain and. I mean, the fact that we've got the eyes of the world upon us at the moment, we're on the front cover of mm. every single magazine worldwide for our popular culture. I mean, why not carry on with that success that we, you know, London is the place to be at the moment, undoubtedly. You know, nobody goes to New York, nobody goes to Paris. Hardly. So, excuse me, anymore. nobody goes to New York. <laughs> <laughs> it's not seen as the place to be. I mean, definitely not. I was talking to somebody from Bangkok today who's the head of like time out there and he said everybody wants to know about London London is the groovy happening so place. we've made it in Bangkok why <laughs> don't <laughs> we've always made it in Bangkok but we've made it worldwide and it's like a repeat of the fashion that London had in the 60s why not ride this way so and bring in the rest of the wonderful achievements that we have in science and technology not only just in art and design and popular culture. All right. So Maxwell Hutchinson. Well, I, she better be going after that. <laughs> <laughs> Maxwell Hutchinson. Um, I don't quite understand why building a dome is very British or why it puts us on the map uh, the way Sophie was saying. Well, it isn't a dome to start off. It's a very, very sophisticated oh, tent. <laughs> that may ah. not be a very entertaining proposition. But it so is... So we're paying a billion pounds for a tent? No. <laughs> The building itself is costing marginally less than £45 million, which, as Christopher Failinger says, if you take that back to the, the Great Exhibition of 1851 or the Festival of Britain of 1951, in relative terms, this is very, very good value for yes. money. And we, in this country, deserve this building. And then what do we do with it? We keep this building for 25 years at least, and I believe that the material which will clad it will last at least that long. And is it about time that we celebrated the achievements right. of British architecture? So, or, uh, well, we'll come to that in a minute, actually. I hope you uh, will. Because it could be a very short celebration. Um, <laughs> so it's a celebration let, let, which the rest of the world are enjoying utterly. Let me, yeah, I know yeah. they love Centre Point. Let me get this right. <laughs> Centre Point, which, by the way, is now a grade two listed building. Yeah. Listed by people like you. Not let listed me, by me. Probably let listed. Me by just, Teddy Taylor on the Conservative but, government. Right, but let me just get this right. So, in the um, 17th century, they were able to build something like St Paul's, which we still see today after the Great Fire, yeah. and we're going to manage something that will last for 25 years. <laughs> well, it'll, it'll, it'll last at least to that. But it's part of the exploration of the way in which we design and build buildings. And when Clive Sinclair started to make watches and computers, Ask him. They didn't last very long, but they pushed <laughs> for. <laughs> did they? <laughs> but they pushed for the expected. boundaries of expectation <laughs> and exploration, and this building will do that. Maybe a better way to spend the money and to celebrate the millennium would be to spend it in knocking down all these horrible tower blocks that your architects yeah. have built yeah. the past thirty years. Excuse me. If I thought. If I thought for one moment that we architects had been solely responsible for procuring these buildings, I would accept that criticism. 
We do it with politicians, with planners. Now we do it with those who commit lottery money. I mean, the money for this dome isn't public money, per se. It's oh, lottery it money. Excuse me. I, think they all, I, think they, I don't think it's the men from Mars that are buying these lottery tickets. <laughs> these people are everywhere. Steve Allen, you've been sitting there, your usual quiet self yeah, as a broadcaster. Absolutely. Where are you on this? What well, do your I, listeners think about it? Do they agree with Maxwell? Well, I, I can't help feeling, listening to all those who are speaking in favour of the Dome, that they're in the wrong part of the programme. It's part two for you. Because uh, <laughs> there is just no... Listening to Sophie Parkin, who's quite obviously from another planet, A, <laughs> a she obviously doesn't live in Greenwich. Well, well, it's lovely that you've dressed for a, for a television chat show in the way you have, and this is demonstrating <laughs> British goods. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm just on, the door. Right, fine, You're right, looking fine. quite yeah. chic what, yourself and that little off the shoulder absolutely. number. Absolutely. Well, one, one actually has to ask. Great to elevated in those fashion. Listen, I've just ordered one of your things from an advert, yes. so I hope it's... <laughs> So I hope it lasts a bit longer, but we have 400 acres sitting down there. I thought there. you'd given up cycling. Absolutely. <laughs> 400 acres derelict. You have to ask why it's derelict, because it's terrible ground. Nobody's remotely interested. Otherwise, a housing developer would have built it. Oh, if hold you on, the South Bank was, was derelict. Still. Well, exactly, but you've got 400 it's acres sitting at the end of a peninsula. The and we're gonna, we, we don't need... Well, I don't understand why we're celebrating the best of British. You wouldn't actually get it in a dome. You could pop it in a little box like this, <laughs> and you could say... <laughs> there it is! Are you out to woo the crowd on your side? Absolutely. Tonight, well, I, I sense the mood immediately, well, so I threw uh, the meat would down. Would radio disc jockeys be part of this Best of British little box? Or I'm, well, I'm, I'm, not. I'm worried about this sort of Best of British thing. <laughs> and did you British ask the question, no, what are we going to... I don't I'm, I don't see any problem with the Best of... I want to know what we're going to put in this thing. And we, the public, are oh. going to pay 12 quid to go down there. It's so all the people of Greenwich have got all this extra traffic, all extra parking, to go and look at what? No, no, Nothing no, that is no, not no, in a museum. No, no, Nothing that is not in a museum. No, 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 let's bring in some of the audience again here. Yeah, there's a... You, sir, what are you saying no, no, no for? Do you well, know something we don't? They want to get the facts straight. All right, start. give us some. In the first place, there won't be cars on the Millennium site. Oh, right. The new Millennium experience, <laughs> they don't get right. any great people to try and get their, spo their points across. They haven't got the real points, the people who are against it. They just denigrate people to do it. So if they're not the going to the are new... they going to park by us, then? No. Are they going to park in Greenwich, where we live? Are they going over by Cable Cambridge? No, Falkenwood. They oh, are. Right. They've got yeah. three... Well, they're going to be They've put in pay permission for three park in right. places. But what would one you like to see, sir? What would one you like on... to see in the... We get the parking pint. But, but what you was... haven't. They're going up the river. <laughs> they're right. not going to drive to the Millennium. No, they're going they, by they, river. They, they're going up the river with the paddle. Oh, oh, really? They're yeah. going by powerboat. We've gone a bit further what than you. What would you like to see in this dome that would be the best of Britain? Football. In the first place... <laughs> It's always good to have an optimistic audience. Yeah. What would you like to see, In the sir? first place, they've gone for the best in one part of the dome. Some people may, may not have heard of the name Cameron Mackintosh. Yes, I think you we have. have. You have. So Great. Right. putting yes. on a little show He's inside put the a dome. Little Brilliant. Show. All right. <laughs> a little show. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Is that all? <laughs> Michael uh, Cassidy. Yes, Michael sorry. Cassidy, where are you here? Michael, there. Sorry about that. You're just overwhelmed here by Sophie. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> <laughs> tell me, why does there seem to be so little public support for this when it is being done with the people's money and in the name of the people? Well, I think the first argument was about the site, and a lot of time was wasted in the battle between cities as to which city would host it. There was, secondly, a lot of delay as to what the structure should look like, where it was going to be built, what the fabric was, and so on. We haven't actually yet got to the third stage, which is what the hell's going to be inside it, and I think that's the part... <laughs> so you can't tell me that either? I don't know what it is. Steve <laughs> doesn't know what it is. We've yet to hear. But I do believe <laughs> that this is going to be a world-class event in the year yeah. 2000, which no yeah. other country yeah. in the world will be <laughs> putting on. And what... What we badly need to do is to stop whinging about it and yeah. come in behind it and make it the world-class success, which I believe it has the potential. All right, Teddy Taylor, Taylor stop knows. whinging, <laughs> make it a world-class All, the all I can say is that pe the same people in Parliament who say this is going to be a great success are the same people who said the Channel Tunnel would be a great financial success. Actually, it is a load of financial rubbish. What we need is to remember this is a religious festival. We should be doing something to give service to people. 
not putting on a strange kind of exhibition, but we've no idea of what's there. And all this stuff about British, all this stuff about British industry, I read in the papers, maybe I'm wrong, that the contract, one of the big contracts was going to a German firm, then it was taken away and given to a United States firm. Now, quite frankly, to make this out as a triumph for Britain just seems to me to be silly and pointless. Can I just ask you one thing, though? You, you suggested that we build a, 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 a big new hospital. If London needs a hospital, why did we close so many a few years ago when your well, government was in power? The reason is, and they're still doing it, because we're short of money. Because we're short of money. And I believe, quite frankly, if you were to announce tomorrow, with support of all the parties, that we're having a great hospital built to give service to children in need, I think you would find the public would respond and provide all the cash, and at least we wouldn't waste. Remember, it's £15 for every person here Every person in Britain, it strikes me as a waste of money when it could be used for something worthwhile. Except it will make a great profit. That's yeah, so yeah. Why, yeah. why, yeah. why, why not a hospital then? If you don't like the dome, why not a hospital? We have a hospital already there. We've got Greenwich Hospital that's already there. They're planning to close it down. But, why are they closing yeah, it down? But what about a world beating hospital to, for, from, from, from all over? If they're going to build a hospital, they're going to build a hospital. Why are they building it behind the black hotel? Where it's dirty. Hold on, hold on a minute. There's so much pollution. They've got a hospital, so we're going to close down one hospital oh, and move it to behind the Blackwall Tunnel. It is a, yeah. it's a desolate ground. Crazy. It is just awful there. So Crazy. they want to move it there. All right. Great. What a waste of money. I just can't understand it. Well, All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because uh, we can see that people are divided on the issues. I'm glad to say, otherwise we might not have a programme. But they are. But to find out what the British people as a whole think, we've got our hands on a poll. And we're going to reveal that exclusively coming up after the break. We well, we had people saying the public don't want the dome and others saying they do. But the Sun newspaper commissioned a nationwide oh, poll oh, by a reputable pollster, and we can reveal the results. It was by Maury. They asked the government, should it continue with plans for the Dome? Only 24% agreed that they should. And a whopping 68% said the government should dump the Dome. <laughs> Only 8% didn't know. Michael Cassidy. The public don't want it. As we said before the break, the fact of the matter is the public haven't yet seen what's going to be in the exhibition. Yeah. Once they, once they see it, the technology can do. In this very dismal week... Can you tell week, us tonight, then? There's only 28 me, months to let go. Let me make the point, Andrew, that in this extremely dismal week, when people are looking forward to how great causes can be advanced and how you can reach out to world population, this sort of exhibition is exactly the way in which you can reach deprived people in foreign countries, in which you can reach the charities that uh, <laughs> Diana... <laughs> All right, all right, all right. But with, uh, with 28 months to go, I think we'd like to know. Disney, after all, takes five years to build one experience theme park. Victor Adibawali, if not, you've been involved in a charity that Diana was involved in too. If not a dome, what should it be? Well, I suppose uh, I'm concerned about two types of Millennium experience. There's the type that uh, those that can afford to get into the dome will have, and good luck to them. But there's the type that 3,000 young people have every year, um, the type of experience which I don't think we should be entering the next century um, with. <coughs> Sleeping on the streets of London, no education, 60% of young black men in certain parts of London, unemployed, likely to stay so. I think the Dome's just a building, you know, a billion pounds. So would you do it or wouldn't you? Well, the fact that I'm a pragmatist, it's going to happen. <laughs> you know, the Dome is going to... Contracts... In which, what I'm concerned about is who the dome will affect, you know, what it is, what's going to happen inside it, that it actually changes the lives of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people across the country and it affects the economy of Greenwich. And I think if it doesn't do that, then I think um, a lot of people who supported the dome will have egg all over their faces. All and right. I think it'll be a great shame. Let me in Bruno Peak. Bruno Peak. You helped to organise the VE Day uh, celebrations, or commemoration is the proper word for it. Probably the last time we saw the Royals in a very good light, actually. What would you do for the Millennium? I've heard a lot about London, and I love London. But we mustn't forget we are the United Kingdom of England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales and others. Well, what we um, should be doing is pulling together a national celebration that everybody across the nation can benefit from. Can everybody come to the Dome? No. I'm talking about a celebration that can involve every man, woman and child in the street, in their own home, in their own town, in their own village, right across the United Kingdom. 
The dome is going to happen, we're going to have to live with it, so we've got to work with it. However, what we should be doing and what we are trying to do is to pull together a national celebration that will raise millions what of would pounds that be? for charity across this country and the rest of the world. Big street party? We'll do that as well. We're, we're planning, we well. are planning uh, for 13,000 events, 13,000 beacons to be lit across the United Kingdom on the 31st of December 1999. Could be a busy linking, night for the fire brigade. Linking, <laughs> no, seriously, linking those celebrations raising money for charity. All right. During... Well. All right, let, let, I understand what you're saying. You're, you're saying that something should involve the whole of the country rather oh, than something no. in the capital, not even the heart Correct. of the capital. John Austin. Where's John Austin there? John, you're a, a local MP, and uh, obviously you like the idea of Greenwich getting this money, putting Greenwich back on the map in a bigger way than ever before. But hasn't he got a point? Shouldn't we be spending this money on something that involves the whole nation rather than just a small part of our capital? Well, this is just one part of the Millennium Celebrations, and there there are going to be those events throughout the country and there's going to be a link up through information technology and the mm. this is going to be the hub of a, a technology and information network that will reach out across the country yeah. it's going to put the best of British technology well, the best of British culture British. the best of British art and for our local area of course yes it's going to not only provide jobs and training so that we don't have 3,000 young people on the streets uh, we, we in our area we've actually lost more jobs than any other part of the United Kingdom and that's it's a deprived it's part it's, of the city it, it, it right? is indeed. <clears> but it, and you think this will turn it around? I think it will. It's about housing, it's about environmental improvement, it's about turning the River Thames back into a communication network. All right, let me, bring, let me bring Lorraine Clifford the back, back in again, because Lorraine, you're a local resident. Sorry, Lorraine here. That's your mate there, but I'm sure she agrees with you. Lorraine, a billion pounds in your area where high unemployment, new houses are needed, this is going to bring jobs, prosperity. Well, we haven't seen none yet. Well, Whether it's going to be yet. in future, we don't know. But they do need to bring money into the Greenwich area. They do need to bring someone to the estates and things, you know, get things going for children. Do but, but wouldn't the whole economy be lifted by this? By the, I mean, already closing mo down most like other the areas of no, the, of the, the country would love yeah, to close the shops There's because the, the, the rents are being pushed up big yeah. pricely yeah. because We're of this millennium dome. We're still waiting for central heating in our buildings. Yeah. Local, local, local but if you're getting, going to get 12 million tourists, visitors, they're going to spend a few bob in your area when they get there. That part of the that peninsula is a wonderful opportunity for the latest technologies and the best of architecture to make a sustainable Damn. microcosm <coughs> of a city. You can make a sustainable city which does not have uh, enormous numbers of car parks, as far afield as Eltham and Falconwood, to pour people into that. You can make a self-contained model city like Letchworth, right. Bedford Park. OK, I like the PPV from Go the Green Party. We enjoyed that. Uh, tell me this, uh, Clive Singer. Aren't you worried we got 28 months to go? We were told by Disney it takes five years to build one experience, 10 years to build a theme park. This 18 is a months theme to park. build the Crystal Palace in 1851, yeah. Yeah. and it's about the same size. <laughs> this is going to be rather more complicated <laughs> than a no, bit no, of steel and glass. No, on the contrary, it's about the same size, yeah. almost exactly the same size. A year and for the Eiffel Tower? Yes. No, it and no one liked that either. Certainly be done. <laughs> and have you heard anything to what change it, your What mind? is being ignored on this is this to be profitable. Because to me, it's the fact that nobody knows what's going in it. But I mean, that, that's, that's the biggest problem. No, what, I mean, it's like you... What we did. Well, see, see when I was climbing, I said it would be profitable. Yeah. 12 million uh, visitors in a short space of time no. is a lot more uh, than the Disney theme park in Paris got in its first days. And they had Mickey Mouse. We've only got Peter Mandelson. <laughs> <laughs> You can, you can treat this on the basis dance. that you've done, Andrew, and, and what you've said has been disgraceful, in my view. You've talked about <laughs> this thing costing a billion. Damn you, you've, you've talked about it costing a billion, when, in fact, as Max pointed out, uh, it's actually 45 million. The rest of it is about an infrastructure that, as a lot of people here have said, actually transforms 400 of the most deprived, yeah. derelict acres yeah. of South London in John Austin Walker's constituency. But the British public say they don't want it. And well, the British the public country. say they it's don't want it, if at all, because of the kind of lunatic campaign you've seen the Sun newspaper running. OK, we're going to have to leave it there. We asked the Millennium Experience people to come here tonight. They said they wouldn't, but it seems that not just spending, deciding what's in the dome, they're going to have to convince the British people First. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, you've got a lot of convincing. Now that look at the poll. <laughs>
You've heard what uh, everyone said in the studio. This is what you've been saying at home on the phones. James from Bow says, Britain has been going down the pan for years. We need something like the Dome. It will put the great back into Britain. Uh, Steve from Fulham says, I think it's a stupid idea spending so much money on something that's going to be pulled down after 25 years. It's ugly and we don't want it. Uh, Kathleen from Peckham agrees. Thanks for your call, Kathleen. Too much money on something so temporary. What about something more permanent for the homeless, maybe? And Sandra from East Dulwich says London is already too concrete. The dome should be scrapped and a park built for the people. And Mrs Patel from Barnet... <laughs> Mrs Patel from Barnet isn't the only caller to say the dome should be called the Diana Dome and dedicated to the people of the world. <laughs> After the break, London's cocaine epidemic, now so widely available, it can uh, perhaps no longer be described as God's way of telling users they're earning too much money. <laughs> cocaine takers and cocaine critics, next.